Hello and how are you? My name is Mohin Dumba and I'm coming uh, to a third lecture of creating uh, a hotel management system using plain PHP. We are going to resume from where we stopped at in the previous lecture so we can see how we finish all that we started. So without wasting much time, I will start our timer. We always do 40 minutes. So you see it's there it has started. One just stop this one. Just a minute. Yeah. Alright. Okay, let's go to this business. Uh, so last time uh, we stopped at this level whereby we had those dynamic form fields that you can be able to give things and they're able to resume with data if the data uh, is lost, like it cannot allow the data to be lost. So I'm going to go ahead and submit my first my full name, email and then the passwords. Go ahead and click on register, then the system will go ahead and get this information and display it here. So right now, we are going to work on the logic of creating uh, the user, okay? We are going to begin working in the logic of creating the user. So, uh, registering this on the database, okay? Uh, so right now, we have to first check if the user is existing on the database or not, okay? And then after, we we'll go ahead and insert this user into the database. So that's what we're going to do right now. So let's go ahead and do our logic, the logic, okay? So we're going to begin with the logic of selecting. Oh, I don't know whether I should begin with selecting or inserting. Okay, since inserting comes, I mean, since selecting comes after inserting, so let's begin with inserting. Then after we can work with selecting. So let's go ahead and first... I uh, open on project so that project is there and we are at this point uh, here we are at this point let me show you where is our form this is a register form so at this point where we are just dumping everything that has come from uh, the server I mean from the form so let's begin so I'll request you to go ahead and start your ZAMP, start your ZAMP and then start your my your php my admin or that your 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 my sql the database uh, for me both of them already started okay so after doing so at this level i believe you need already know the basics of uh of sql so you can go ahead and open your local host and then you go to php my admin so under php my admin you'll be able to find all your tables there okay so what you're going to do right now we're going to create uh we're going to create we're going to create our new database okay that we're going to call hotel pro um so what i'll do i'll go ahead and come here and create a new database by clicking here new and then i go ahead and call hotel and let's go pro so that is going to be our database we shall call it uh, hotel pro like that with underscore so after doing so i'll go ahead and say create database then we'll have our database okay so right now we're going to begin by working on the by adding the users table there because everyone almost will be the user so to add a users table i'll click on uh, our hotel pro there and then go ahead and click on create okay so here I just simply come here to hotel pro and then say give the name of your table you can just simply press here and then i work on the creating the table name okay so let's go ahead and create a table so our first table we're going to call it users so it's going to have maybe like um let's see eight columns let's go ahead and create so when you click on create it will go ahead and bring you this form Okay, so in this form, I'm going to give the fields that we shall need for the users table. So in the users table, we shall need ID. It should be an integer and you can make it on increment. Okay. Okay, a default is going, it's not going to be none. Just going to come here and say AI auto increment and it is a what? It is a primary key. That's going to be our ID. And then the next thing we're going to have, 
the name of the person so this one can be text and then it can be null by default then you're going to have uh, the username so username so maybe you can limit this one maybe to variable character and say maybe two to five two five five because someone cannot have a name longer than that username can also maybe make it variable character and we we'll give it that make it null uh -huh. then we we'll go ahead and add uh maybe the password okay the password of someone okay uh i go ahead and create password so it's going to be a text and can be null by default all right so let's see if more things that you may need to add you may need to add phone number of a person so it can be maybe variable character then maybe uh 25 maximum can be null by default you may need to add also maybe a photo of a person so you can make it also a text and then make it null, nullable here then you can add maybe address of a person we'll go ahead and make it maybe variable character and make it maybe two to five two five five and make it null by default what else do you need may need to record about a person do you need to record the agenda i don't know let's go ahead and record the agenda or you can simply put six okay so can go ahead and record variable character to two maybe 25 and go ahead and make it null by default or you can make it maybe male or female something like that all right so uh and there's no gender that can go beyond maybe uh 10 digits okay female is six all right so can make it maybe 12 or something like that all right so uh that's it that's it that's the table of uh, the users so let me go ahead and submit and create this table. So I say save. So it will process and you see we have our table there, which is beautiful and straightforward. So right now we're going to work on the logic of uh, of the logic of inserting data into the database. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and think of how we're going to approach this. Okay, so how are we going to approach it? I want us to uh, create a single. I want us to create a single function that we shall use to dynamically insert data into the database. Okay, without too much problems. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so what I'll do? I'll just simply come and. Um, all right, so I'll come to our project. I'm going to create a function that we are going to use multiple times. So I'll come to our functions uh, function. Uh, sorry, I'll come to our functions file. So in this functions file, I'm going to uh, let me increase my size of the font. So I'm going to create here uh, a function that I'm going to be using to insert data into the database. So I should not suffer. Okay. So this was a text input. All right, so let's go ahead and create another function. So this function, I'm going to call it what? I'm going to call it, um, so I'm going to say function, and then I'm going to call uh, uh, function, I'm going to call db uh, insert, okay? So this uh, database insert function, we shall be accepting uh, the what? the database and then the next one will be what an array okay then uh, we are going to use it to create a what an sql i'm going to explain every part here that you've seen here so it's going to, we're going to use to 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 uh to to create an sql okay so let's create here uh a fun, another function for database connection so let me come on top and uh, bottom here and create function i'm going to call db connect and i'm going to explain it as well so this function will be returning the database connection 
So let me go ahead and explain uh, database. I mean, let me go ahead and explain what I've done here. So this is a DB insert. Okay. So first of all, to get the connection from here, DB connect. I mean DB equals. I mean DB uh, connect. So it will call this function. This function will process and bring back the database. So this that this function for it's going to be just a connection equals to my SQLI, and then you give it parameters localhost, and then the username is root. So if you're using my uh, Windows, you may not need to put here another password. I mean password might be empty. So me, I'm going to put here a uh, root also. That's for Mac by the default password, and then I put here the name of the database, which is. Uh, hotel underscore pro okay so hotel pro so that is how we get the connection to the database so we are at this point now it will come back this point and we'll have the connection in this then after you're going to uh, explode the fields so to explode the fields it means that uh, you are getting uh, the fields with their respective values from the what from the array let me just show you step by step so what i'm going to do i'm going to go to our what to our register and then here before we dump okay here before we dump things let me go ahead and say db insert and then i say i'm going to insert in users and i go ahead and pass the second one as a what and an array so I give it the name, I give it the username, and I give it password. However, here in password, I'm hashing the password. I'll explain what's meant by hashing password. So let me go ahead and die from this point. I say maybe uh, done, something like that, okay? So let me come back now to our insert. So you see, this insert, db insert, is just taking the, table of the, the name of the table where we're going to insert data, and then it takes the what? The parameters in this format. It's just an array, you open an array, and then you give it keys, a key and a value. So here, give a key of a name, and then the value is uh, that name. The key of email, the value is this one. And then the key of password, it's got password underscore hash, then you get the password, and then say default password. I'll explain this one later. So if we go back now to our DB, so here we're calling our DB insert, the one that is going to be working on the logic of inserting the data in the, in the, web, in the, in the database. So let's go back to db insert. So if I come here to db insert, here we're getting the connection. So let me die here and see if the, the, the connection. So let's just say die, say maybe success. So if I come here now and refresh, let's go to our project. So if we come here and refresh, you'll see that everything is successful. Now let me first echo and show you what we have as what? As... Um, as our what let's see what you have as data so it's going to be print underscore r and then we see what you have in data so if you come and refresh here you'll see that our data is just the name and then the email and the password so this password hash is a secret way of how you hide the password so it cannot be uh it cannot be cracked even if someone, I mean, so, so it cannot be manipulated, sorry. So it, someone cannot know it exactly even if they fall on our database. It is, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, used to secretly, I mean, it, PHP is the one that generates it and it's PHP the one that verifies when someone wants to log in. So we get this and then email and then the password. So if I refresh again, you'll see that key is going to change. So this one is, that's how it works. So it is unpredictable. And this is the one that you're going to save on the what? On the database. That is why even the, for the password field, I had to make it like a big, so that it can be able to contain such a field. So you don't keep plain passwords. You hash the password like this, like the one I've shown you here. And when you verify the password, I'll show you how you verify if the password is correct or not. Because what you shall have on database is not what the user actually entered there. Alright, so that is our data. So you can see everything is okay. So let me cut, let me remove this. So if I want to see now what is what you have in fields, this this uh, implode. So it will change that array and give it what? And give it, uh, and put them in a string. 
and separate them with what with commas let me show you so you see array keys you just put the data here like this so if i come and refresh here you'll be able to see that we're having name email password and this word success i can remove it so you can see that we have just separated name name email and password so at the end of the day so you just we, got, we just get your keys so this array keys it will get the keys of the array that is here okay uh so that is the array keys uh function it's in build function of php it gets the keys of array then implode it will turn those keys or it will turn uh, the array into a string and then you, you give here what it should use to split that array to separate those the, the, the values of those keys in array so after doing that we go ahead and do here so i'm taking it step by step we go to ahead and do here values equal to and then you also uh implode okay so we implode also we turn the array we turn the array we turn the array values so these array values will get the values inside the array okay we turn the array values into uh what into uh we turn the array values uh we separate them with commas okay but here the point is uh when you separate them we, we don't just separate them in commas but we go ahead and attach if, uh, an apostrophe at the end of it okay a hyphen okay something like that so if i come here and refresh now i'll be able to see that uh, if i come here and dump okay now i'll be able to see that this is a what our database i mean sorry our values so it they are organized in the same what in the same orders okay in the same order so we have not done uh the what we've not done um the sql injection escape okay uh the, the string escape let me see if we can do it here uh string escape so this is how we can do it okay so this string escape will help will help uh to do what uh this string escape will help uh to escape uh the values that might be having strings okay that might be uh, sorry that might be having dangerous strings like um uh, hyphen so you see here i'm just simply looping and updating here the database okay i'm updating here the, sorry our data table ah uh, sorry i'm updating here our um, our data so i just simply say data and then i pass the key so it will replace the key okay well, the whatever key that is there and then i say my sqli real escape string this is another inbuilt function of php it takes the connection and also the value so for it to convert if if a string has something that is dangerous to our sql it will go ahead and escape it so if i come and refresh here right now you don't see any problem but let's say that our name has an hyphen in it for example let's come here to register and let's put just for example uh, let's say that a name okay let's say for example okay let's just use this name we just replace it okay so i can say here for example uh my name is Bira sabia okay so if i come and refresh here you'll see that the name is okay bira sabia so i can say now my name is bira sabi for example or i can say maybe uh yeah let's say that's my name bira sabia so you see this hyphen i mean this um uh, uh how do you call it <laughs> this single quote this single quote it is going to mess it is supposed to mess up with the structure of our sql okay and that's what we call even sql injection so if but if i use the escape and come and refresh here you'll see that this hyphen has been escaped sorry refresh again you see this hyphen has been escaped so it is not going to be considered as part of the what of the original sql now if i come back let me go back to fixed function mm -hmm. let's say that we did not escape let's remove this one here so if i come and refresh now you'll see that 
Birazi Sabias. So this has already messed up with our what? With our SQL. And the SQL is no longer in what? In order. At the end of the day, we shall get an error. So that's why you need uh, to look, for example, into your data and remove the injections that might have been placed. It's not that only someone can put like uh, uh, someone can put like uh, a host of like that one. So that one will terminate the SQL. But if it is doing like this, then it will be considered as what as not part of the SQL. Uh, someone may put like comment something like that. Yeah. See. Okay, so the SQL injection will remove the injection. So if that's the best way how we can elaborate this, you see. So it is not accepting that. All right, so that is uh, how we do what? That is how we we create the SQL. So right now, you see, I'm having the values, which is okay. And you saw we had the, the parameter that were okay. So let me go ahead and remove this testing thing and put back our post so you see everything is now fine okay so after doing that uh we shall go ahead we shall go ahead and uh, we shall go ahead so we have here the values okay the values are like that we just implode uh the array values from the date of the data so this array values will get only the data in this s in this array then the array keys will get the keys in the array all right, so after doing so, you can go ahead and remove this one here and we proceed. So we go ahead and come up with our SQL. So our SQL is going to be insert into and then we say table. So we substitute this table here and then I open bracket and then I put fields. So these are the fields, I put them here and then say values. So these are the values, I put them here. So right now, if I come here and just before I execute it, Let's first see what we have as a SQL. So let me come here and just print out the SQL. Okay. So if you come here and refresh, you'll see our SQL is there. Very clean and perfect. Insert into users and then open square brackets and then put the name, the email and the what and that. Values, then go and put the value, the what and so everything is perfect. Okay. Everything is perfect and this SQL is correct. So now if we go ahead and let me remove this one and save. Okay, so everything is okay. You can pause the video and look at this very carefully how I've approached it. So here I'll be sending if it is successful, I send true. If it is not successful, I send false. Okay, so let's just keep it as simple as that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and run now this sql i mean and run this okay remember i've removed everything that would have stopped it let's go ahead and refresh uh-huh so unquote uh-huh there's a name there's a known column called email so we don't put email on our what on our database we just put username uh so do you need username and email or we need one of them i think we should change this username to email so let's go ahead and change here and then come here instead of having the word username the word username let's put email okay so everything is now fine let's go ahead and submit again refresh see perfect it's done so if i go ahead and click on users you see our user has been inserted their name their email and their password so everything is perfect at this moment everything is perfect if i again insert now it is inserting this user for the second time so that is what that is what we don't want we want if someone already has the if the email already exists in our database we should send back the user and tell them that um the user i mean uh, uh the user with same email already what already exists so that's what we're going to do right now so but you can see our insert function is working properly you can write it very carefully and pause the video and write it very carefully and understand how it works so now here on uh, our register.php we are going to be checking before we insert we're going to be first checking and see if there is another user with the same email i'm going to put this logic here i'm going to put that logic there so let's go back to functions so this is our db insert it is already working and we can proceed 
So I'm going to put here on top here. I'm going to put here another function. I can call it db uh, select. So let's see if Copilot can help me. So db select. We'll go ahead and take the table. All right. Sorry about that internet connection glitch. So we are creating a function of uh, selecting. So it is going to be db select, and then we are going to begin by passing the table, and then we go ahead and pass the where conditions, and by default there will be null. Okay, and then we go ahead and pass the fields that we want to collect. So by default, uh, there will be uh, all the fields which is represented by star. So let's go ahead and break this SQL down. So uh, we shall go ahead and get the connection by saying connection equals to db get connection. Then after we go ahead and write the SQL, it's going to be SQL equ uh, equals to select and then we put the fields that we need to select. So if it is all, by default it will be all. And then after we put from, then the table. Now we check if the where condition is not null. So if the where condition is not null, we go ahead and put the where condition. And then after doing so, we go ahead and run the SQL, okay? So we run the SQL, we give it the connection and then the SQL. Then we say data, and then we say we check if result is not null. We go ahead and loop by using my SQL for each, I mean, my SQLI fetch associate, associative array. Then we pass the results as we are putting those results in the array, in the, and we are putting each result into the data. And when you finish, we go ahead and return back the data. So let's go ahead and execute it step by step. So uh, we're going to come back here to our register function. Remember here, we're going to check if the email uh, already exists, okay? Already exists on our database. So we shall just simply say maybe, uh, maybe data, we can say maybe data equals to, then we call our function, which is dbsql. So we go ahead, uh, let's die here and say maybe, uh, uh done or maybe can put full stop something like that so uh this sql it will necessarily take only one what one it will necessarily take only one what only one uh parameter the other parameters are, are, are optional that's why you see they have the default values so let's go ahead and die from this point so i can just say die and then i pass the table for example okay so if i pass the table You'll see that if I come and now execute our SQL, you'll see that we're having the users there. Okay, we're having the users, the users, which is the name of the table. All right, we proceed. So we write the SQL is going to be select and then fields. So if I come here and I put the SQL here, I die with the SQL, you'll see that I have the SQL to select from users, all from users. So by default, it's selecting everything from users. Uh -huh. So let's go ahead and come here and put the where. I mean, sorry, I'll die the SQL while it has the where. So I put, I refresh. So since where is none, it is not being added there. Okay. So after doing so, I go ahead. And now let's try to put, for example, the where. So I can say, so where it will be accepting is it is the second parameter here so it will be accepting uh, it will be accepting uh, the string so i can just simply put comma 
where and then I come and put here uh, for example I can say where email equals to the email that we are using I mean the email that is that we are going to check if it is existing with the data on the database okay so I have email equals to and then I go ahead and put just like this where email let me pass this one uh, where email so I put space and say where email equals to I open single quotes like this and then I substitute here the email I remember I collected email here which is this one so I go ahead and substitute the email so by doing like that we shall have put the where condition so if I come and refresh sorry the email should be between these quotes okay so if I come and refresh you'll see that our SQL is there with the where condition in it so where email equals to the email that I've passed so it is clean and it is okay so let us proceed with our condition I mean with our SQL so I come back to files I go ahead and get the results and then I look through one by one and then after I'll come up to with data and so you can pause the video and look at this so this is just connection the result my SQLi query okay and then you pass the connection and then the SQL and then you say data equals to an empty array and then you go ahead and say if results is not null then you go ahead and get each row by using for uh, my SQL my SQLi fetch associate associative array or fetch as fetch asoc and then each row that you get you add it into the data into the data table I mean to the data array like this and then after you go ahead and return the data so if I come back so that you can pause the video and look at our DB select very carefully okay you can look at a video very I mean you can pause the video and look at that very carefully now if I come back come to register now let's go ahead and see so I can just simply put here echo and put here some pre tag so you can dump our our SQL property so I'm going to put the pre tag so I'm going to say print underscore r and then I pass the data that I want to display okay so let me pass the data there and see, then die so let's refresh and you see what data will have come back so if you refresh you see we have received a clean array of course with the email that is already existing in the database okay so I, if I pass for example a wrong email is that maybe on this email I add something like this so it is attached to it so I want to receive an empty array because the email does not exist sorry wait let me pass something that does not exist and we see so let's just pass uh, so some that does not exist you have an error SQL syntax okay so the problem with the error let me just come here and just put for example this okay so the syntax was the problem so refresh you see the array is empty so because the email is not existing that email that we have just forged so if i come and refresh here you'll see the email is existing so what we're going to be doing here you're going to check if this array is not empty and then we redirect back the user and say the user with a provided email or it exists with the on our database okay so that's what we're going to be doing here okay so if i uh this is how you check if an array is not empty so i can just simply say if not empty like this and then i pass the array so which is the data so if it is not empty i'm just going to simply redirect back the user and exist the system and say that the user with the same data with the same email already exists so let's go ahead and redirect the user so we can just do like that we did here uh, where did this guy stop good uh, connection let's try to restart our just a second okay there you go all right so uh so i'll just simply copy this so i check if it is not empty i go ahead and say session uh form errors and then i put in the table of username and then i say email already exists or a user of the same email already exists on the database and say a user with that email already exists in a database okay so i direct back to location register.php and then i exit 
so that is how we can check if it is successful or not i mean something like that so let's go ahead and and what and refresh here let's go ahead and refresh so you see it has brought us back here and then it is showing here the error a user with same email already exists something like that so but it's showing here many errors so it is good like when we are fetching a new table we clean the errors that are already there and the tables at the top of the table so we can just simply and set if it is set here can just simply say if is set this session i uh, go ahead and clean the errors okay so i go ahead and set that uh so i can do the same for the what for the form uh for the form fields okay for the form data okay for it is being replaced there so that it should not should remove the errors okay so let's go ahead and submit again you see it is bringing us back with a single error where it says a you that with even that email already exists okay on our database so that is beautiful okay so now or oh, let's go ahead and see if the user does not exist we go ahead and uh, log in the user so to log in the user what we shall do we shall uh, simply uh, we shall simply uh, insert the user after inserting the user we get that user back again okay we get that user back again so to get that user and then after we direct i mean after we then uh, log in that user and then we direct maybe to the um, admin okay one more thing that we forgot to add is the user type okay is the user type by default we should have the user as what as a customer or client okay we're going to add that one there but let's first uh, okay let's first add that there so i'll come here to our table then come here to structure and then go ahead and say add one more column so in this column i'm going to put uh user type user underscore type so i can just put variable character and then put maybe 25 and then say maybe by default by default as defined and say maybe by default the user will be a uh, customer customer and then maybe i can also make it nullable so something like this so by default the user will be a customer so i'll just simply come here when you're inserting i go ahead and say when i'm when someone creates account by their own so user type user underscore type it should be what a customer like this so that will be like uh, the default all right so after we have inserted the user let's get again the data so it's going to be looking much more like this one so i'll just simply copy that to see if the user was actually registered so i'll just simply copy that and then go ahead and say data equals to that so if it is empty right now if it is empty we can so know that maybe something went wrong while registering the user so if it is empty i'll just say uh something went wrong okay an error occurred please try again okay and then i redirect back if it is empty you see if it is empty so if it is not empty i'm going now to log in the user so i can say now if it's not empty the user equals to the first value in that array <clears throat> then i log in this into the session so to log into the session i can just simply put here session equals user equals to this user so i'll know that every logged in person will be having this session set okay as user and that's what shall be detecting that the person is logged in uh then after doing so i'm going to redirect this person to their respective uh panel okay so i'll just simply go ahead and redirect uh so i'll check if user type is admin so I'll go ahead and say uh check if user type is customer so i check if user type is customer we direct him to customer if the user type is admin we direct them to admin so i say if user type is customer like this i would direct him maybe to let's like, how should you call it customer.php <laughs> uh, how should you call how should you call the landing of the customer 
I'm thinking. I think we should call it. Uh, how should they call it? Customer. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I should call it. Uh, let's call it customer. But PHP. Okay, customer. The PHP. Uh, so that will be the landing. So the panel for the for the for the admin to be admin that php that will be for the administrator so after doing so uh, just a second guys a second all right so uh so if the if the user type is that is a customer we take him that if the user type is admin take him to the side all right so let's go ahead and here you exit let's exit from here okay so let's do that so that is how you finish the registration okay you can pause the video and look at this very carefully so i check if the method is post i go ahead and clear the errors if the it is set i go ahead and go the login user evaluate if the email is correct i go ahead and check if the passwords are the same i go ahead and select and check if the user is existing if the user is existing i redirect back then i go ahead and insert after inserting i go ahead and select the users again and then if everything is okay i go ahead and uh, i select the user and then i go ahead and set this user this is very important this one it's when you it's where we are actually logging in the user if it's successful we direct this user to customer.php if they are customer. If they are not customer, I direct them to, to, PHP, to admin.php. So let me go ahead and create those two files and then we call it a day. So it is be customer.php. So say maybe customer, customer, customer dashboard. Okay. And then another one will be. admin and then i'll call this one admin dashboard all right so that's it uh let's go ahead and save that and i hope you've seen how we've approached that so now if i go ahead and save and then i go ahead come back to our project it is admin.php sorry uh, register.php already there let's go ahead and try to register again so if i come here and refresh our form fields are there we can work on the logic that whether we should be clearing them or not so if i go ahead and register it, it just directs me back and tell me so let me register my other email moves 0 x moves 0 x at gmail.com so if i register right now perfect it just takes me to the customer dashboard so i'm now logged in so in the next lecture, we'll start exactly from there, where we are going to now take it from there, work on the admin, adding the rooms, all that, customer placing their orders, etc. But at this point, you should be able to uh, understand why the direction that we are taking, and we have finished almost the core things. And uh, in the next lecture, we shall take it from there. So make sure that you don't miss. Goodbye, and see you tomorrow, if not Monday.